Hi, I'm Paige Bartholomew, and I'd like to talk a little bit more today about healing. Have you been doing a lot of spiritual practice and spiritual work, but you still feel like, what the heck is wrong with me? Why can't I get better? Why am I still getting so upset? Today we're going to talk about how to heal along the four levels of our being, heart, ego, soul, and unity. In the first level of our being, this is where we're going to find injuries that come from fear, anxiety, fight, flight, or freeze. Now, when you hear the words fight, flight, and freeze, what does it make you think about? It makes you think about the fight, flight response. Where does that exist? That response actually exists in our nervous system. So if we have an injury, perhaps from childhood or from some trauma along the way of our life, like an abandonment or a car wreck or a death of a loved one, anything that causes a wound that makes us feel fight, flight, freeze, anger, or anxiety, fear, that injury, that wound is actually living in the body. And if we try to heal it, from any other part of the being, we're probably not going to be real successful. So what we need to do is actually go into the body to find the release. There is a lecturer who has videos on YouTube that I respect very much, and his name is Matt Kahn. And he talks about the ego as being nothing more than the overstimulated nervous system. And that's exactly what it is, and we're going to look more deeply at that. So what happens when the body perceives a threat? When the body perceives danger or threat, it instantly moves from the higher prefrontal cortex, the thinking of the higher mind, and it moves instantly into the brainstem. No more higher thinking can happen at that point. No, there isn't going to be any... Um, you know, connection with our higher self and, you know, oh, let me stop and consider this for a minute. All of that goes out the window. And this is actually an adaptive mechanism of the body that's kept our species a lot. What happens in the nervous system is that the energy that was mobilized to protect the body then gets stuck because it wasn't able to follow through with its protective mechanism. If it's able to protect itself, then the wound will not be established in the same way. It doesn't turn into what we call trauma. So you see people who've been in wars or in traumatic situations where they're reliving the traumatic situation over and over and over again in their own mind, perhaps triggered by a sound or a smell or a behavior that someone might exhibit um, and it's triggering the traumatic memory because the traumatic memory wants to reintegrate into the proper place in the brain so it loops in these stories so what we see is grown-ups grown-up people who've been way past that childhood experience of hiding under the table with their parents fighting grown-up people who when they hear arguing, or when they hear someone raise their voice, they have a trigger. And that trigger sends them directly out of their higher mind and their higher thinking, and directly into the brain stem. And now the memory is going to loop, and it's going to loop, and you're not going to know why you're so highly activated in your body, but it's actually a flashback. These flashbacks can be either mild and barely perceptible, or they can be huge and obvious to everyone around you. Um, flashbacks from traumas happen to everyone all the time. So what we want to do with this kind of healing, if you are feeling feelings of fear, panic, fight, flight, or freeze, and freeze means complete immobilization where you don't feel anything, then you are you are dealing with a wound that has gone into traumatic memory in the body and the way to release this is actually through the body. So I'm going to give you a, a really simple technique that you can do to begin the process of healing through the body. The idea is we're trying to regulate our nervous system. We're trying to teach our nervous system 
that the next time this trigger comes, it won't have to get so upset. So the first thing we do is we go and we, we scan our body sensation. Don't think about the story and don't think about the emotion. Think about the body sensation. What am I feeling in my body? Okay, my hands are shaky. My, my fingers are cold. My feet feel kind of cold and numb. And I feel mm, perhaps a disconnect between my lower and upper half. You may feel something completely different than that. Whatever it is you feel is the right thing to feel. We're just noticing. Now I'm going to find a place in my body that feels okay. So I scan my body. Is there any place in my body that doesn't feel this upset right now? Yeah, I think my little toe on the right side doesn't feel upset right now. My little toe feels happy and remembers what it feels like to be okay. Okay, great. If that's the only place you can find, then we're going to work with that. And if you can't find a place in your body, then you find a place outside your body. Perhaps a memory of a beautiful beach that you visited. Or any place that's safe for you, really safe for you. Go there in your mind. What we're going to do is what we call pendulation. We're going to move from the feelings of fear, fight, flight, freeze, and we're going to move into the feeling of feeling good in our little right toe. Feel the sensation in that right pinky toe or wherever your place is. Okay, I feel that. Yeah, okay. Now I'm feeling a little calmer because this is what the nervous system will do. I'm feeling a little calmer. Good. Now I'm going to move very, 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 very gently just to the edge of the upset. Okay, I see it over there. Oh, I can feel the upset there. I don't really want to go there. Great, that's enough. Stop right there. Now we're going to go back to the pinky toe. Okay, little pinky toe friend, remind me how to be centered. Remind me what it feels like to be okay. This is all about reminding the nervous system how to calm down. And we do this again and again and again and again until we in as long as you can you know or until you until you feel your body begin to regulate regulation of the nervous system is what is needed when we're dealing with trauma healing in the level of the heart is all about reminding our deep self that we matter here is where the heart just wants to be loved it wants to remember that it's loved on every level. It wants to hear that you love me. It wants to remember how to love itself. It wants to remember that the universe loves me and that I matter here. So every wounding in the heart has to do with the flow of love. My friend Mark Dotsi has a Facebook page called Mystical Meaning. And he likens emotional wounding to a garden hose. And if the garden hose is free of kinks, then the water can move through it freely, just like emotion moving through the body or the heart freely. But if we have wounds, then that hose is going to kink up. And when it does, then the love can't flow freely through the hose. So every emotional wound that we have, fear or grief or betrayal, these are all wounds of, an, of love being blocked. So when we can remove the block, then we don't feel pain anymore. The pain comes from the block or the kink. And how do we remove that kink? by loving. So I want you to just listen to me for just a minute as though I'm really speaking to you. And take this in, okay? I'm opening my heart and I'm speaking to you. You matter to me. You matter to me. I love you. And just let that in. 
just let that wash all the little places in your heart that are so thirsty for that love. I know these places because my heart is thirsty for that love too. This is the way we can help heal each other by giving this unconditional love to one another. And soon, once we learn what it feels like, then we start to be able to give it to ourselves. When we're on the level of the soul, it's more quiet and it feels more like a feeling of just being alone. Just being so alone. And um, this, is a, this is a misunderstanding of the truth on the level of the soul. Uh, healing on this level comes from spiritual practice. It comes from prayer. We find healing on a spiritual level from meditation. We find healing on a spiritual level from reading inspirational, hopeful messages from beloved authors or perhaps websites or watching videos that remind us that we are all one and that we are together as one being here and that you haven't been forgotten. On the level of the unity, there is no wounding because on the level of the unity, we know that all is one, that we matter, that we are loved, and our body is calm because it knows it. When we know who we are and what we are and that we're loved and that there is enough love for me, my body calms down. And at this level, we're at the level of unity where there is no wound. The important thing to remember is that we can't skip over the levels. We can't collapse the levels. We can't just go to the unity and fly around and pray and meditate all day long and think that we're going to be healed. Because what happens is people that meditate a lot will be fantastic when they're meditating or when you know they've been praying for three hours. But as soon as they go back out into the world, they become activated in their body and they don't know why. And there's this subtle message inside of us that says, what's wrong with me? Why am I not getting better? Why am I not able to heal? I'm doing all this spiritual work and I'm not able to heal. The reason we're not able, able to heal is because you can't just focus on the unity and expect for the body and the heart to know the truth about themselves in those levels. We have to work with the level of the body, the level of the heart, and the level of the soul. And we heal on every level. And in the end, we come to the unity naturally because we've made peace with ourselves on every level of existence. I sure do treasure our time together and I treasure the emails that I receive from people. So if you'd like to reach out to me, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash the revolution of evolution.